I've fished True Valley for about the last six or seven years. It's without a shadow of a doubt the premier pike fishing water of the UK, if not Europe. It's just an outstanding water. It has a huge, huge head of pike in, up to a massive size in excess of 40 pounds. For a UK fish, that's just colossal. It by no means is an easy water. It's like any other fishery. One day you can turn up, you might catch 10. The next day, you might not get a pull. Um, you just never ever know. That next hit could be a 20, could be a 30, could be a 40 pound pike. Likewise, could be a three or four pound pike. Uh, but it's those sort of moments, those sort of days that keep me coming back to Chew Valley and no doubt will continue to keep me coming back to Chew Valley. So here we are, True Valley Lake. So even after a delayed start getting out, the weather has improved slightly, which as you can probably see is more than a drizzle. Give it an hour ago and it was absolutely throwing it down. Uh, we got a slight breeze, but a real, real chop on the water yesterday. Um, loads and loads of rain. The fish has been mega, mega hard, but with a bit of luck, all this bad weather will stir them up and we should have a few fish. So the plan for today is primarily fishing soft plastics. Um, it'll be a combination of the replicants in various sizes uh, and the pro shads in various sizes, various colours. I really rate the pro shads for searching and finding fish. A very, very, very aggressive lure. Body shape just means that the belly's going one way while the tail's going the opposite way, producing lots of flash, lots of vibration. Um, hopefully just the ticket to stir up a fish, fish or two on a day like today. Um, the replicants will also be one of the main aims of attack. Uh, it allows me to stay slightly deeper, a bit more of a, um, a straighter body, but a massive paddle tail. Again, giving off lots of vibration, hopefully stirs up a fish or two. If all that fails, uh, we might go on to a few spinner baits or a few chatter baits, um, but primarily we'll be fishing soft plastics. Uh, so to start off with this morning, we're going to fish uh, one of the bays known as Herons. Um, it's quite shallow, 9, 10, 11, 12 foot in the middle. Um, we're fishing this primarily at the moment because the bait anglers can't get to it, or the bank bait anglers, should I say, can't really get to us. So it gives us a bit of water where there's no, no other baits going in. Uh, it also holds a lot of fish, and about halfway down the bay, we're going to come to a solid bank of weed, which hopefully we'll be able to fish some pro shads over the top of. Um, the bait anglers can't get near it. Because it's been fishing so tough, I'd like to think that um, a lot of the fish are just sat sulking in the weed and um, by presenting a lure over the top of them fast, we'll get a reaction bite and hopefully get a fish on the boat. So um, we're fishing down in Herons Green and it's quite a short drift in Herons. We've got some um, weed either side of the bay and a nice little channel through the middle. So because of the drift today, we're just gonna zigzag up and down through here, try and locate some fish. Then we can stay more in an area, concentrate on where the fish are, see exactly what it is that they want today. There were definitely pikes set um, just off the bottom. Just off the bottom is a really good sign. If they're sat right on the bottom, they're generally very, very difficult to pick up. If they're just off the bottom, tend to find that they're feeding a bit and we've got every chance of catching one. 
So um, again, we've come right over to the side of the drift. We're verging on six or seven foot of water right on the edge of the weed. Um, and we should fish from the weed straight across the bay, straight to the other side. I'd expect to be picking the fish up right along the weed line. Um, some of the bigger fish, maybe down in the centre channel. So, um, Chew Valley's famous for its big fish. Um, personally speaking, I think the fish in here do so well because it's a relatively shallow water. Um, being so shallow, the weed life is brilliant, the invertebrate life is brilliant. Uh, therefore, as a result, the coarse fish are gorging themselves on lots of invertebrates. The trout are eating the coarse fish, the pike are eating the trout, the pike are eating the coarse fish. So all told, everything that swims in Chew Valley has got the chance to be a very, very big fish of all species. Um, being so shallow, it does stay very warm in the summer, um, but it gets highly, highly oxygenated as well. It's plenty of wind, plenty of oxygen. Um, so the fish just seem to do really, really well. Also on top of that, I think Bristol Water uh, manage the fishing extremely well, limit it to just a couple of, um, a couple of sessions a year. Uh, it does get a lot of pressure in those couple of sessions, but it does leave a long period of time each year where the fish can chill, get themselves back together, recover, um, and wait for the following year. So the majority of the time on Chew, us lure anglers and boat anglers cannot stand the bank anglers. However, there is always days when you have fellow rage anglers on the bank that send you out a bit of breakfast. Fingers crossed Ben's not stitching us up. <laughs> that in phoning, about 40 yards away. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> oh, look at that. Ben's a legend. <laughs> Cheers, Benny boy. So, um, at the start of this drift, we've come across weed almost straight away. So it's time for a quick change. The replicant's a little bit too heavy for it. Um, quick change over to the Pro Shad, which is in a blue bait fish colour. Uh, we'll be fishing this in a 10 gram jig head, additional stinger on the back. Um, gonna pair that up with a jigger rod um, from our Terminator range and see if I can now just fish just above the weed a little bit more and um, hopefully draw one of these fish out of the weed. I thought I might have just had a little bump from a trout. Don't think so. Probably a missed opportunity. Mr. or Mrs. Esox. Let's get back out there and see if we can get him. Oh. So we've had a couple of drifts through relatively shallow water down here in Heron's Bay. Um, one possible take, bit of damage to the paddle tail and the pro shad. Um, just doesn't really feel like it's happening. The weed's a bit, bit heavy down here, been a bit chopped up. Uh, so we're going to go and try some slightly deeper water, slightly edging our bets, perch and pike. But um, right now on these cold, windy, m wet, miserable morning, any fish will do for a start. Um, but we're just gonna go and have a look, try some of the deep water, see if we can get a pull, try and work out where the fish are, what they're, what they're feeding, and um, see if we can find a group of fish that hopefully we can have, have a bit of a good afternoon. Right then, time to cover some slightly deeper water. 
the new bright pink pink candy I believe 12 centimeters Xander Pro 15 gram jig head see if we can find the fish or two so we've now moved over into the, at the moment it's not that much deeper we're in 10 foot but another 10 15 yards to our left and we'll be in 20 foot so we're just going to kind of fish from this um 10 11 foot down into the 20 foot just to see if the fish are somewhere else we've fished all morning with very little interest in 8 to 12 foot so now we're just going to that slightly deeper bracket and just see if we can um, see if we can find a fish really there's quite visibility is quite poor today less than two foot so the lure fishing obviously is um, is limited slightly but if we can present a bait in front of them I'm pretty confident we'll get one Yeah, the, um, the wind today isn't actually too bad. It's probably only 10, 12, maybe 13 miles an hour. Um, gives us quite a nice drift along the front. We might have to um, correct the drift a little bit so we can drift in front of the jetties there and drift along this, um, you know, this drop off going down to about 20 foot. As you can see, we're already in 13 foot now. And it's just going to continue to get deeper and deeper as we get out in the next sort of 15, 20 yards. So just had a cast over to the shallows. I hit straight away. Not happy. Mr. or Mrs. Esox got away with that one. Trout. <laughs> oh, here's a pike. Here's a pike. So the new pink candy comes to the rescue. Ultra UV. He's nailed it. That's why we fish a really long trace. Oh, and I might need a net because he's got a flying treble there. Look. That's why we use a long trace. Ultra UV, out of sight. Not quite the specimen we're after, but that is a two valley pike. <laughs> Fingers crossed they get slightly larger. <laughs> so today on Chew, we've used numerous different lures. However, my favorite lure on Chew has got to be the Pro Shad. Um, these come in various colours, various sizes. These are just a small selection of what I do like to use. Um, all of these catch fish. This being my favourite, which is the, uh, the marble. This is in quite a small size, 14 centimetres. So we do do these um, much bigger, up to 24 or 28 centimetres. Great big units, not my cup of tea. Personally, I think the, the pike on chew thereafter uh, a snack they're not after sitting down for a three-course meal um, and I think this is what creates a snack bite for them um, so these are very very simple to rig they can be rigged up with a corkscrew jig head one or two stingers on or how I like to rig them which is nice and simple is just with a jig head and a simple stinger um, most of the time I prefer to use quite a small jig head 10 grams uh, it's got a little hook retainer there and I would set this hook so that it comes in two thirds of the way up, up the front of the jig head, bring it through to where the hook point comes out. But as you'll see there, it sort of sits off center. Um, as a result, 
that allows this body more rolling action. I think it moves the center of gravity to the, to the center of the hook and it allows the body more rolling action, the tail more rolling action. Absolute killer bait. If you haven't used them, get on them. So we've um, had a drift or two over here, more by the, uh, by the pontoons and by the cages. We got 10, 12 foot in the, in the shallower side. Um, we're now out fishing 21, 22 foot. Uh, we just put a small pike in the boat, which is great. At least it's not a blank. Um, but it's time now to start thinking about trying to find one or two of the better fish. And my personal opinion is we've got to head to the shallower water right along the reed bed, uh, the weed bed over in Stratford, dodge a few of the bait boats and, um, and see if we can put a big fish on the board. It has been extremely difficult the last couple of weeks, so it might not be on the cards, but we can but try. Game. It might be a trout, mate. Eh? I hope it's not. If it is, it's nailed a replicant. Oh, it's a perch. The size of that and all. Not quite to the required species. Jesus Christ, these are good in and all. <laughs> That's probably getting on for 50 centimetres, isn't it? But let's see what we can do. So, proof of the pudding. That big perch was hungry. Good fish. It's a big fish for two. It's uh, 44, 45, 44. Low threes. Yep, not quite the required species. But any predators today are, uh, are happy days. And when you're catching perch of that standard, you're not too annoyed. It's a big old fish, isn't it? Right. Oh. Not what you expect on a rep, but. <laughs> okay, so. Even though today's been immensely difficult, um, the, the other go-to lure that I have on Chu Valley is a replicant. Uh, people have been using the one here for years. They've caught countless numbers of fish. Um, we do them in from the very small up to the very large. Very difficult for casting, but great for trolling. You've got an electric motor on here. You can troll them through, no problem at all. Um, huge paddle, so displaces massive, massive amounts of water. Um, for myself, this size is perfect. As you can probably see, this has caught loads of fish. It's torn to bits. It's got lots of character uh, and hopefully it'll catch me a few more yet. Um, so today we've been pulling them through deeper water and slow, which they're perfect for. Um, but likewise, I've been trying to drag them across the top of the weed, nice and fast, trying to entice a fish to come up out of that weed. Um, unfortunately, not with a lot of luck today. Um, they can be fished really slow. Um, because the tail is so big, there's such such a lot of um, vibration, a lot of movement. One thing I do like with these is the body itself holds very, very still uh, while the tail's going, so they're not quite as, um, as aggressive a bait as, as the pro shads are. Um, 
the other good thing with these is even after casting, while you're waiting for that, that bait to go down closer to the bottom, this tail is banging away all the time. So you can get a hit on the drop. Um, like the perch we had earlier, that was pretty much taken on the drop on one of these. Um, well worth trying. Today, they just haven't really produced the goods <laughs> like they bloody should. One final little tip with the, with the replicant, which can be used with all lures actually, but that I tend to use with a replicant because it's got a very big wrist, is you can insert a, gra a glass um, rattle in there, which just adds that little bit of extra noise, little bit of extra vibration. Um, they're perfect for going into the base of some, some tails. Again, this is just perfect for it because it's so thick. Um, they tend to last a little bit of super glue. They stay in there. That's been in there for months now. So had lots and lots of fish on there. And hopefully it might get us one more today. Right, so it's now um, mid-afternoon. We've tried a few areas on Chew. Uh, most have been particularly difficult today. There's a bit of chopped up weed from the wind that we've had during the week. Uh, the colour's a bit out, but we have had a few small successes. A small jack over by the jetties, um, along with a quality perch, probably three pound plus. Um, there's still fish to be had over there and there's still fish to be had in a few areas. However, when you come to Chew, you don't really come to go jack bashing. You come to try and find one of the elusive monsters that are in here. And um, I feel the best way to try and do that is to come and cover some ground over in Stratford. With the water levels being as low as they are, we're only sort of fishing seven or eight foot at the moment, but the weed has died back quite a bit. Um, we're actually getting quite a nice drift here, so we're quite optimistic. Um, Having spoke to one or two anglers on the bank today, it seems that everybody's in the same boat really. Everybody's struggling. Um, the weather certainly hasn't helped. Nobody's really catching any numbers in any one area. So I think we've got to just keep trying all the areas and just persevere, and particularly try through here, through Stratford. Uh, over the last six or seven years I've been fishing to, I've had more big fish in this area than anywhere else and a lot of people have had, um, have had multiple catches of big fish in this area. If I'm honest, I'm not 100% sure why they're here. Um, it doesn't seem to be vast numbers of bait fish. Um, there is quite a consistent depth and a good old weed bed to our left, so that's somewhere for them to hide. Do get a lot of trout over here, so I suppose if these big, big girls are eating the trout, that'd be perfect for them. Um, weather looks good now though. We've got to just get these last couple of hours in, get red down and try and catch a big girl. So, um, just on our way back over from Stratford now, it was pretty tough going over there, but it's been tough going everywhere. Lot of weed, lot of surface weed. Uh, did have another tail bitten off, but that's no good. Um, so, last hour, return to where we've seen most of today's action. Back over in front of the jetties, in front of the fish cages and uh, see if we can pick up a fish in the last hour. Tight lines. So here we are at the end of the day pretty much. Chew has been normal chew and beaten us up. Um, so we're just going to spend the last half an hour, 40 minutes pottering around this uh, bits of feature, which at the moment, as you can probably see to my right, is the jetties. Uh, holds lots of bait fish, plenty of pike and perch around here, whether they're feeding, different kettle of fish. And over to the left there, just behind the camera, is the um, is the cages, again, great fish holding feature. 
whether they're feeding today is a different ball game. But you would have thought with this last hour, we're losing the light, everything just looks right, the wind's died, the rain's finally stopped. Um, so we will give it the last 45 minutes and see if we can get one for you. <laughs> well, here we are, dying casts, and we have another Chu Valley monster. All two pound of it. <laughs> Still on a tough day, we've had a couple. The pink candy's doing its job. This pike looks particularly skinny. <laughs> Not a massive specimen, is it? <laughs> no. To be fair, look at the state of it. <laughs> Straight back. <laughs> Thought we might have done one then. Well, that's the end of our day on Chew. Um, not a particularly good day today, very, very difficult. Just the two jacks, one nice perch. However, I will be back. It's always that unknown. Your next cast might be a 20, 30, 40 pounder. Today, unfortunately, it was more like a two, three or four pounder. But uh, I should be back. It's all good fun and time for a beer now. Thanks very much. <laughs>